Okay, ladies and gentlemen, today I am very pleased to be graced by, well, you might look and go, is that Joroslav? You know, some people might go, wait, that's Alan Ag Edgar Poe, right? Well, people, it's William Mosley. William, thank you very much for um, stopping by. I think now people might be going, is that David Crockett? Right. <laughs> I hope so. I mean, people are watching the movie. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, thank you for your time, man. Really appreciate thank you so it. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah. Hey, so Davy Crockett, like, you know what I mean? You've been doing this thing for a while now, yeah. right? Yeah. So, what was it like kind of playing this sort of role? Um, yeah, you know, I. I've always wanted to make a Western. I've always wanted to be in a Western movie. I always really wanted to be a cowboy. To be completely honest with you. I think <laughs> most boys have. Um, and so when I got the chance to play one of the most iconic, um, you know, American cowboy heroes, I jumped at the chance. And like, uh, what was fun for me to play this character was um, obviously I got to I got to learn how to shoot a musket, which is like a which is one of the first rifles ever ever made you know it's, it's, mm. it's got it's gunpowder operated like it it's an incredible it's just an incredible um machine you know that was that was built you know like the early 1800s uh or was used in the early 1800s and then i got to ride horse i got to ride a lot of horses in the movie i got to fight a lot um i was out in the elements uh, in tennessee where david crockett is from so it's kind of a dream job to be honest with you like you don't get many like that so I was, I was very lucky. Mm. So had you ridden a horse before? Like, you know, did have you fought much? And like fought much in the Hollywood sense? Like, did you understand, you know, the dynamics of all of that kind of thing? Yeah, you know, I was, I was very lucky because um, my first movie I did was The Chronicles of Narnia. Mm. And um, on the Chronicles of Narnia, I had to do a fight scene with Tilda Swinton, who played the White Witch. And we had to learn this 100 beat sword fight. And actually, it went really well. And we kind of learned the dynamics of sword fighting and on screen like combat then. And the director was really happy. And so he got me um, like a kickboxing trainer and then got me working with the stunt coordinator for the second movie. So we did a 120 beat fight for the second movie. And, um, and then I did a lot more. And so basically I just learned it when I was young. I learned the language of it when I was really young. And then, so when I came to do a movie like this, it was, it was quite, it was just like hand in, hand in, in the glove, you know, just fitted. And um, I think they were quite surprised by how easily I, I adapted to it um, because I also enjoy it. And I know what is, you know, what you need to do. I mean, the thing is you can't really sell every punch, you know, yeah. when someone, when you're on an angle with the cameras over here and, and you're getting hit there, you know, it, it's hard to sell it when they want to shoot it in a single take, you know, um, but you do the best you can. And, and you know, I think the movie works, you know, so people seem happy. So it's all good. Mm, mm. OK, that's interesting. Right. Because I wasn't quite sure. But yeah, I like, you know, that you've done the sword fighting and all of that. But right. having that trend, I wasn't sure how that translated with, you know, f the fists, as it were. So, yeah. yeah, it was just a simple kind of transition for you. Yeah, you know, um, the, the fight coordinator on the first Narnia and second Narnia, Alan Porter, he said to me, I, w I actually said to him, I was like, why am I learning kickboxing? You know, it's like, I'm supposed, aren't I supposed to be learning sword fighting? And he's like, no, man, you need to learn kickboxing in order to understand um, sword fighting. I was like, why is that? It's like, well, you know, the shield is like a block you know you hold your hand up and you block it and then the punch uh is just um the sword just an extension of a punch it's exactly the same movement so if you can punch right you can stab right if you can block right you can use the shield right so like and then you just need to learn to use your legs better you need to learn how to use your legs to kick someone away or you know as someone comes in like move him through this way or whatever like that way and fortunately for this movie just before lockdown i picked up brazilian jiu-jitsu Oh um, yeah, yeah, and I used to learn that over a fight zone in um, in Hackney, and um, I used to do like ten hours a week. I was kind of obsessed. Before mm. COVID hit, so 
what was quite fun was adding a little bit of jujitsu um into some of the fight scenes you know oh yeah i saw the rear naked choke and i was just like i don't yeah. know if davy crook is rear naked choking people <laughs> <laughs> probably not he's probably not putting people in a in a in a, in a triangle choke but it's still fun to add it it's still fun to add it in. <laughs> Oh man, I, yeah, jujitsu is so friggin' addict. I, yeah, I did jujitsu for a while. Um, I, I hurt my knees, so I haven't been able to do it for a minute. But god damn, it's just like you you finish the session and you're just like, yeah. can we squeeze in some more? Because I, yeah. uh, you know, yeah. when can I come again? Uh, you know, you just find yourself just constantly there. It's so that, great. It's um, yeah, you know. I'll be completely honest with you. I was going through kind of like a rough breakup at the time. Um, it wasn't, it, it was, it, I mean, it was as good as breakups can be, but you know, when you lose someone you love, if that's a relationship or that's a death, yeah. you're basically dealing with grief, whether you know it or not. And I went, I was in an acting class and I was doing some acting work and I was sort of talking about what I was connecting to emotionally. And this girl said to me afterwards, she said, you know what? You need to go to a fighting class. You need to go to a fighting <laughs> class. It really help you. And so when my brother started doing jujitsu and I saw the place was like right on my doorstep, I was like, that's it. The, the sign is there. I'm going. And it kind of like, yeah, it really helped me a lot. It really helped me because it's, it's very humbling. Like, you know, mm. you know, you get humbled very quickly i don't care if you think you're tough i don't you know whatever you think you're strong you think you're tough you think you're able to it's so technical that you can be beaten by someone half your size you know yes <laughs> <laughs> oh man it's it's just like because that's a bit like it was funny man i where i used to train like every january right every january especially you'd get a new crop of people come through yeah. And a lot of times it'd be like these hench dudes would come in and be like, Rawr! you know, and then after a few seconds, yeah. then it's just, oh. yeah, yeah. And they're just puffing, man. And right. they're getting tapped out by little girls. And, yeah. it, and it's just, just, that's it. Right. Yeah. And I'd roll with um the instructor yeah. and, you know, he's, putting you in moves and you're just like yeah, yeah. i don't even know what you just did there yeah. I, and sometimes he'd you'd be like you'd get something and be like come on now you just gave yeah. that to me yeah. <laughs> like, come on now you know what I mean? but yeah. it but it's just that whole thing of every week every yeah. session you go yeah. Yeah. you're improving and you can see those improvements exactly. and that's just so exhilarating yeah. watching your evolution as yeah. you transition from, you know, a novice to someone that knows a little bit, to yeah. someone knows a little bit more and a little bit more, and you're just adding, adding, adding. It's a beautiful thing, you know? It's a beautiful thing because it also teaches you to deal with pressure, you know? Mm. Like when you're, um, it's a bit like, I always describe it a bit like, it's a, it reminds me of surfing, actually. Oh, gosh, yeah, because, yeah. Um, when you're surfing and you get absolutely obliterated by a wave and you're and you're held under yes. and you're just down there you know and you're and you're fighting for the surface you know that you can't panic you know that you have to in a way relax otherwise mm. you know you you're more likely to drown you know so you have to just stay calm you have to stay focused and you have to swim to the surface and similarly when someone's choking you you cannot panic no. you know but, you know, you just have to respect that either you're going to tap or you're going to think of a way out of this situation, you know, like, but just don't panic. You know, it's, it, like you said, when somebody first gets to jujitsu and they find that they're in a rear naked choke, like you just said, and they're just thinking, oh, I, I can't do it, I'm going to die, I'm going to die, you know, like, <laughs> you can find calmness in it, then then you can sometimes get out of it, you know, with like a foot lock, for instance. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Very, very true. Where do you surf? I used to live in California. So um, right before COVID, I, I lived in LA for 10 years. Um, and I and I loved it. And I just basically, I just felt like one day the chapter was closed. But I used to go out to a place called Neptune's Net, um, which is like on the county line of LA County and Ventura County. They have a really, really great wave there. Um, it's a like a 
it, it's a point break. So it's it's a big wave, but it breaks pretty gently. Um, right. Whereas, you know, you, you could surf like an eight foot, seven foot wave there, but then you go and surf like a four foot wave in Manhattan Beach where it breaks very, very quickly. Like kind of like how it breaks here in, in the UK and it just mm. destroys you. You know, you come out feeling like just being punched by Mike Tyson in his prime, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's where I used to go. Uh right, right. No, the only I've surfed in Wales and I've surfed in Cornwall. Cornwall yeah. the most. Yeah, yeah. And you could get some really good waves in um hail. Hail is where I'd go in October a lot of the times. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that was that was fun, man. Like, do you have you found that you know surfing, jujitsu, that these things have kind of helped your acting in a way? I think they help you to deal with life, and I think they help you to be a more rounded person, which inevitably helps you to be a better actor. Like, it's very important to remember that you know you can always learn from people, you can always learn from others. You know, if you're a beginner at something that's a very good place to be. That's a very respectful place to be. And, you know, you when you're willing to ask other people, how do you, I don't know, how do you duck dive well? Like, how the hell do you duck dive like that? I'm getting sent that way and you're already out there. How is that happening? You know, when you're willing to like learn like that, you're willing to like get your ego out of the way and listen to somebody else. I think that always would help your act and it always help you in life and that always help you through things that you're struggling with. So yeah, I, I try to do these things just to kind of like, um, it helps my brain actually it helps my, the way that I think better. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, that makes, that makes a lot of sense, man. Cause I've definitely found it as well, like yeah. doing jujitsu and, and, you know, kickboxing, surfing, rock climbing, just yeah. all of these things just help kind of channel your focus and help you, you know, just see the world as this different thing, right? That you're not the best and that yeah. there's these mountains still left to scale as it were. Exactly. Exactly. And you know, like that comes down to small things where you're just like, like I can't cook, so I would like to learn to cook. You know, I would like to like learn how you cook well. You know, and that's mm. art that people can learn. That's why I don't think I, I don't get depressed. You know, a lot of people suffer with depression, and I've been very fortunate that I don't really ever get depressed because I always think of something that I could learn or something that. I could do something that I could be better at. You know, I play a lot of tennis now. So, you know, like, uh, I, I just think I'm lucky that I do a job I love. And then in my spare time, I learn things that I want to learn, you know? So I'm a very, very lucky person, really, you know? Well, I think, you know, I think there is a level of luck with certain things, but then there's hard work that goes into it. Because you mentioned, you know, a little bit ago, to your acting class yeah and you know I, I i wonder how many people still do that when they get to a certain level right yeah. so that when you mentioned that i was like yo that's something but then you talked about the jujitsu and the surfing and i gave like yeah that makes sense yeah. right it makes sense that you would still do that sort of thing yeah yeah you, get better. you will always find a black belt in a jujitsu class you know, a black belt's still going. You know, they, they, know when they're a black belt. they know everything. I mean, they could be a four down black belt and not even be an instructor or teacher, and they could still be going and still show yeah. up, you know, for like a session and still like, you know, like I would I was a white belt and brown belts would 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 roll with me. Like it's like and sometimes I put them through their paces because I'm I was I'm very fit, you know, I've got a very high VO2 max. So I can so I sometimes would see a guy a brown belt struggling a little bit and it was getting on his nerves, you know, I could feel it because I was going mm. and but you know, of course he ends up beating me. But it's like they still have the humility to show up, you know, they still have the humility to go, not be like, well, I'm a brown belt, F F them, like I'm not going, am I? Why would I? I'm the best. Like, you know, like that's cool, you know, like you have to, you know. I mean, that's an, a very important mindset. Right. I think to, to have, and I think it 
helps you progress. It helps you develop and just, you know what I mean? Stay maintained, right? There's, I think you, you see people at a certain level, they become complacent and then the drop off is crazy, right? So if you come with that right mindset, you're able just to, you know, progress and yeah. evolve. I mean, with your acting, yeah. like you've had so many different types of roles, you know, like Prince Liam in the Royals, yeah. you know, he's very different from Davy Crockett, <laughs> right? <laughs> so <laughs> it's like, what for you, goes into that right what are you looking for when you know scripts come past your desk right what what are you hoping to achieve like what level of research do you like to do what's your process man? well I can tell you my process for David Crockett like you know um and how it usually is like I I first of all look at the script as like, would I enjoy making this? You know, I'm. That's not always what you know. My agents are always like, you know, like you should be looking at this, or you should be looking at that, or you should be doing this, or you should be doing that. It's like, but would I find it fun? You know, like, mm. would I actually find that fun to do? And like, maybe I I will take more jobs, you know, that are not as fun as I think they might be, but um so it's always good to work but I always look at what's going to be fun and um I just couldn't imagine anything more fun than being David Crockett and so when it's fun you want to do all the research you want to find out everything you want to watch all the films you can about it like um I I went out to Tennessee two weeks early to work with the cowboys on the movie the uh the horse wranglers and and basically like I was with them for six, eight hours a day. You know, like I would learn like, how to do bowler knots. I'd learn how to, you know, uh, rope from like gallop a horse and, you know, rope from a horse, uh, catch things and pull them in, which I had to do in the movie, how to like jump on the horse and ride out, how to shoot the musket from the horse, how to like, you know, even work the horse from the ground. Because like, there's a point when Davy Crockett like gets the horse and he like, you know, he just like, tames horse. I mean, obviously it's, it's a movie, you know, he doesn't, can't really tame horse in that short amount of time, but, you know, he takes a wild horse and like, there's a way that you walk up to a horse, you know, like, and I learned that from this one cowboy where he was basically like the toughest guy, you know, big mustache, proper American cowboy, like, you know, really tough Colorado guy. And then suddenly he'd get in with the, he'd get in with what we call the round pen, you know, which is where he, they would have the horse, one of the horses, and he would walk up to the horse, like in the most humble way, like he'd drop his shoulders, he'd like, subordinate himself below the horse's energy so the horse wasn't afraid because horses are um pack animals you know they're prey animals mm. so they are not um they're not like a bear that's um you know an, a, an attack animal whereas the horses are prey animals so they're very easy to scale so he would walk up really like low key and like really bring his energy right down and then he'd like take the horse and he'd like work the horse up and then he'd start to run the horse in, in circles and he'd stop the horse with his hands all from the middle of the round pen. He'd be working this horse, let backwards, slow it down, make it walk backwards, bring it up to him like this, all from just using his hands and his eyes and his body. And so it was, it's kind of like um, horse whispering, you know, <laughs> when you watch it happen. And so I, I tried to learn that, you know, for that moment. Um, but, but those guys, those wranglers really gave me David Crockett. Like they gave me the person he was. Horse training, horse work hasn't changed, you know, I don't know how many, a thousand, two thousand, five thousand years. So you you take what you count for other people. Obviously, I listened to um I listened to the audiobook of David Crockett. It's like I read the book, his his book. I went to where he was born and where he was where he was from. I mean, I didn't go to where he was born, but I went to where he lived. Um, I went to David Crockett State Park. I, you know, I went to like a place where he had lived. Like I did everything I could. I, I watched loans of dog. I watched every Western out there, you know. <laughs> I, I love it. You know, if you love it, if it's fun, you would do all the work, essentially, you know. Mm. Yeah, no, that's, uh, yeah, there, there's something to that, I think. Yeah. I think, yeah. I, I think it, it shows in a performance when, you know, someone's put in that level of, you know, research and just, you know, their soul into it all. 
Yeah, now, one thing you, you mentioned about when you're looking at stuff and it's just like, would I enjoy making it? Now, does part of that, though, come down to the rest of the cast, right? Because oh, you wow. might read something and go, oh, that sounds like it'll be fun. And yeah. then everyone's just miserable. And it's just like, God damn, this is hard work. Like, what? Yeah. The, how does the cast play into those things? Yeah, you know, um, I worked on a war movie, um, a Second World War war movie in Bulgaria. Um and I got really ill while I was working. And uh, I got like a chest infection and then I got food poisoning. And I still I still went to work. And we were up at like four o'clock in the morning. Then we were back at eight at night. We were filming on the, the mountains in Bulgaria, running in like the whole, you know, Second World War costume. And, and there were times when it was hot. Like we were like, those guys were tough guys. And <laughs> they were breaking. They were breaking in front of me. And, you know, when you go through those experiences, you know, I, I fortunately never complain. I'll never, ever, ever complain. Um, but when you go through those experiences, you know, you really are there for each other. And it's very important because I, Dame Crockett was fine. You know, I didn't have a problem, but like on that war movie, it was hard. And um, I wanted those, you know, you have to support each other. You have to get each other through sometimes, which um, is kind of crazy. You know, like it, it it becomes like being in a war zone where the guys are your your troop, they are your army, they are your you know battalion. Like you you pull together, you know. Like even when one guy's like losing his, his mind, everybody <laughs> pulls together for him, you know. And, and that's how it should be. It's not always like that though. Um, sometimes there are difficult, more difficult actors than others. But <laughs> I'm sure you've heard the stories. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> How did you form like the chemistry with um, you know, your uh, your wife and with kids? Valerie, yeah. yeah, with my yeah. wife, it's well. I think um, well, with Valerie and uh, like and the kids, like you know, love is love, and if you can bring your own the own your own love to you know you imagine your own that you know some i use different things sometimes i use like my own life and i imagine like the person that i love is this person and other times i just imagine that like if i were this character and this was my wife like how would we be right now how would we feel if our house was burning or whatever you know like our kids were taken like how would we feel about that in this time period how could we get them back with having mm -hmm. a police to call no one like we're just out down done like how do we do it? You know, so I use a couple of things, you know, um, and then so that's why I use with Valerie and try to connect with her like that. And then with the kids, you know, it's for, I would I would have like pizza with them all the time and I'd always hang out with them. And I, I kind of told the story before, but it's like they they always want to do stuff at the weekend. So we'd always do like fun, light things. You usually just be like going for pizza, you know, we would go out and do something fun. Like it's just something like go to the mall or whatever. But one weekend they were like, oh, let's go to these um, Cumberland Caverns, which is like this, it was a two and a half hour drive away from Nashville, which I didn't know. And then <laughs> and then it was, I thought it was basically walking through stalagmites and stalactites, you know, but it wasn't. It was crawling through oh. tunnels 300 feet underground in absolute blackness. And I get the worst claustrophobia. Oh man. And I couldn't, it was like a Ben Stiller comedy sketch. Like I couldn't <laughs> tell them. Oh, sorry, my light's gone out. I'm gonna put another light in. Um, I couldn't tell them that I was um I couldn't tell them that I was claustro claustrophobic. Um I couldn't tell these kids that I was claustrophobic. So um oh, there we go. So basically I was I was crawling through like this. Like that, I couldn't even I couldn't even crawl with both arms out like that. I had to crawl like that at one point, and I had my neck in a position because a rock was here. I mean, for like an eight year old, it's like amazing. It's like a dream, yeah. you know. For like <laughs> seven year old, eight year old, like they're just like whizzing through. Oh, I like that was like I'm basically getting stuck, and then someone did get stuck, and then you have to stop, and you're you got a rock in your back, you got a rock in your head. You're three hundred feet underground. And then someone's screaming, you know, like some woman or some guy is stuck. Or just like, 
this is hell. Why did I decide to do this? <laughs> but um, fortunately, the kids had a lot of respect for the artists, and it really kind of bound us together, that experience. But never am I going caving ever again. That is never, ever, ever happening again. <laughs> <laughs> honestly, oh, it looks man. like it looks like I got out of a car accident when I uh, <laughs> when I came out there. They, they could picture my eyes like this, like. like that. <laughs> 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 physically ill, physically oh. physically Ill. and I paid for it all, which was the experience. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, when I, I there's I've always wanted to like um you know, go to like Machu Picchu and yeah. see some of these Inca ruins and things like that. And I've heard that would be fascinating. Mm -hmm. And I've watched shows where they've, you know, archaeologists have gone to explore. Yeah. What I didn't know is to get to some of those places, you basically have to do that, right? You have to crawl through these tunnels in water, under the ground. And yeah. my thing is, I'm like, okay, fine i could do that but that's a country where i know there are giant fucking snakes yeah yeah right yeah. who's checking yeah. that there's nothing in there before i start <laughs> going in right who's checking i, <laughs> I, I did it in vietnam i did it once in vietnam someone said to me I was with my friend, we were traveling, and he and he asked the instructor if we could go through the Coochie Tunnels on our own, without without him as a guide. And I swear to God, it was one of the worst things I've ever done. He said to my, the, the instructor, in half Vietnamese, half English, the guide, he said, okay, you guys go on your own. You go left, right, left, right, left, left, right, left, right, left, straight, left, right, left, left, right, right. And I was like, what? And he goes, you go any other way, you die. You lost. Oh, you lost. They are 100 miles long. 100 miles long. I was like, I was like nah. no, Matt, we're not doing that. He's like, no, 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 I got it, Will. I, I, I know what he said. I remember it all. And I was like, you're joking. We're not doing this. Anyway, we went down there. <laughs> By some miracle, we actually didn't know where we were going. But there were bats flying in through the tunnels, which he didn't tell us. So you literally, you literally feel bats hitting your shoulder as you're crawling in the black through the coochie tunnels from Vietnam. I mean, from the Vietnam War, it's like unbelievable. So yeah, would I say I do, do that kind of stuff again? No, that's the only thing I don't want to do. I don't mind heights. I don't mind water. I don't mind anything. I just don't want to be stuck in a tunnel, to be honest <laughs> with you. <laughs> <laughs> oh man you know you maybe you shouldn't have said that right because because like someone might be like yo let's get let's get will for our new film <laughs> tunnels yeah that that'll be a great visual for the screen we'll have him do this thing <laughs> you know <laughs> and you're just think i'm not taking that role but it'd be like yo okay so we want you as a new i don't know like um well, fist. Is we that... want a new Iron Fist for the MCU, and um, there's going to be this bit where he's in the mountains getting his powers, and he has to escape, so he has to crawl through these tunnels. Will, look, it's it's a ten movie deal, right? You, <laughs> oh, you have a TV series spinoff. Just have to crawl through a tunnel, Will. <laughs> oh, for that. That's <laughs> that okay. But not backpacking doing it. I'm not going with some, you know, I'm not going in a random place. I'm, I, I don't know. Okay, fine. <laughs> I tell me you do it on a TV show. Right, fine. I'll, I'll, I'll go through hell for that. But, <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, that's great, man. Oh. When going into um, Davy Crockett, yeah. What did you envision being the toughest part of this process? And once it was all said and done, what actually was the toughest part other than crawling through a tunnel? Yeah, other than crawling through. I think the toughest part of this movie, yeah, I mean, the toughest part was, you know, we had a really, we had a, 
I we worked at night and we had like a, a rain machine and that was being pumped from the river where we were shooting and it was in November so it was pretty cold but that really wasn't that bad what really concerned me was um I had to yeah I'm um, rope from the horse basically I had to gallop a horse and uh throw a lasso around a tree trunk and pull the tree trunk which was connected to a tree across mm. the path and the horse was very skittish on that day and um you know you have to have your fingers in the right place with the rope you know because you have to get it round run the saddle the pommel of the saddle and if your fingers in the wrong place you can lose a finger very quickly yeah um, the horse can you know, you don't have your hands on the reins so you don't really have hold, control of the horse you have a musket i think i was holding a musket at the same time a rifle and the horse was also really jumpy so like at any point you know you've got the crew in front of you, you've got the sound guys over there the horse doesn't like the boom and so the horse can easily just sidestep like that and if sort of horse sidesteps and you're trying to throw a rope at the same time you're you're gone like you there is no nothing just there's nothing that will help you except hoping that you're going to land in some leaves and not on a broken branch you know like mm -hmm. so that was a that was I was worried and also because I've been practicing it I didn't want to let the the horse wranglers the cowboys down like I didn't you know so I that was a real challenge for me um in the movie it's a blink of an eye it barely it could have been a stunt guy <laughs> essentially but um I did it and that was hard and I was proud of myself for doing it because I worked at it and I and I had to trust that it would work and um and yeah it was a challenge there was another day when the horse just took off over a swamp I was holding that I just I had to leap up onto the horse and then um ride off and the horse just did not like the boom did not like the sound guy didn't like the, the furry thing on the end of the, the sound guy's thing and it just bolted in the other direction and I didn't have the rain so I just jumped up I had the you know the musket in one hand I had the belly had all of the reins and going across the marsh people were shouting you know like I, I thought I was gonna get thrown but luckily the horse just calmed and, and stopped and I got all the reins and it was okay. But yeah. Ooh. I know. Yeah. <laughs> you just you know, you, you know when when you when you do okay, look, up I'm just gonna tell you, like, you have to be careful because it's not just like I'm brave and I'm I'm gonna do it anyway. And you know, mm. I'm you know, you have to be careful because if you do get hurt, you break your collarbone. Let's say I, I do get I do get thrown from the horse. I break my collarbone. What does that mean for the movie? Yeah. Um, that means I can't work. That means everybody there doesn't get paid. That means um, I can't work for at least six weeks. That means the investors are like, what is going on? That means hopefully the insurance company cover cover my um, you know my hospital bills. Hopefully, like. You know, then we can pick the movie back up because now the weather's changed um, and there's now a snowstorm in Tennessee. Like, who knows? So, you know, it, it, it it's practically you have to be on it. You know, you have to think like the first day of the director was like, oh, would you just go up this ravine, this cliff, basically? And I just was like, I, was like, I could, but it's better that the stunt guy does it because what if I do get hurt on the first day? What if the horse does fall on me like what if something does happen i break my leg on the very first day like how stupid you know mm. so you have to weigh up you know you have to weigh things up you know no that's i mean that's very sensible right because i think when you look at it w through those lenses yeah if you're injured it stops everything everything right Stop. and if this was a Hollywood produced film, exactly. it, it would be a bit easier. But when it's an indie film and exactly. you've got these tight shooting windows, you've got this limited fund to exactly. do the work. Exactly. Then this may never get finished. Exactly. Exactly. You have to respect the parameters in which you're working in um, and, and respect the people you're working with because that's their job. You know, that's yeah. their job. Christmas like what if they suddenly don't make the money they thought they're gonna make like what does that mean to them you know so yeah it's all about being brave and doing your own sense of that but there's also a level of you know um being sensible and you know thinking about risk reward you know um so I always weigh it up in my mind 
I'm always, always weighing that up. Is this a good idea or is this a bad idea? Yeah, definitely. And also, like the stunt people, that's what they train to do. So, <laughs> right, you know what I mean? Don't take their job from them. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, let them, let them do their thing, right? Exactly. <laughs> and they're amazing at it. Like, you know, that's another, uh, you know, level of humility where you're like, like we're talking about with jujitsu, like it's like, or a great surfer. It's like, wow, you really are incredibly good at that. That is mm. amazing. Like everybody should clap you. You know, that's so impressive. Yeah. Oh man. It, it, and that's why it baffles me that there's not a stunt person Oscar there at the be. moment. It is just insane. Also, insane. I think kids would watch the Oscars just to see the stunt, the coolest oh. stunt. Like that's you so real. Like, for yeah. that award would be crazy. Like yeah. open the Oscars with someone doing a stunt, right? Yeah. Rather than some, you know, boring monologue that, you know, is just not really that funny. Open up with this crazy stunt. Everyone be like, yo, you know what I mean? It'd be the record viewership. <laughs> exactly. 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 You know, like they give it to for like, I mean, I'm not gonna say what, what they all the awards they give it for, but they should. They should. Mm. Yeah. yeah, it did. Yeah, definitely. What was harder to work with, the horses on Davy Crockett, or um, Aslan the Lion on Lion the Witch and the Wardrobe? Well, Aslan was real, man. Um, what? Aslan was real. <laughs> yeah. man. Don't, don't, don't do that. Yeah, he was real. He was real. <laughs> 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 Wait, so how did you guys get him to talk? Yeah, uh, <laughs> they are the best uh, linguistics animal trainer in the world. Come and work with the uh, with with the lion. Well, now obviously they employed Doctor Doolittle. You know what I mean? <laughs> exactly, exactly. Exactly. You know it. Yeah. Oh boy! I like um. Hard oh, sorry, one thing on the Narnia movies that was quite hard. I had to chase a galloping horse, kick a guy, grab the saddle, and then jump on the horse all while it was running. It's called a running vault. Um, and you see it a lot in like Cirque du Soleil and stuff. I mean, they just mm. right. But that's that's quite hard and that's quite fun. You know, you, you um it's quite dangerous because uh, the boots I was wearing, they were very they didn't have a lot of grip and the ground was wet. They always wet the ground at night on movies. And I had to run at the horse and I did think. I was worried that I'm, I'm usually not worried, but I was worried that night. And actually, it, it did work fine. It was cool. It was a cool moment. I wanted to do it in one take. It's in two takes because the kick was good in one and the jump on the horse was good in another take. But yeah, the director gave me seven takes. I remember it very specifically and he wouldn't let me do it anymore. <laughs> that was it. In fact, it was the stunt coordinator that stopped me. Stunt coordinator was like, well, that's it. No, I'm done. I'm not having you do it anymore. I was like, okay. <laughs> All right, guys. It's your, it's your deal. It's your deal. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that, that's interesting. Because I would have thought the hardest part of that film would be eating Turkish delight. Because, boy, like anyone that gets, you know, sells out their family for Turkish delight. I'm just like, it's not even that nice, man. What are you doing? Yeah, well, um, luckily that wasn't my character. <laughs> that was Edmund. Um, but, yeah, uh, he will never eat it again. He had, to mm. eat, he had to eat so much of it. I think he was always sick from the sugar. <laughs> it looked disgusting, actually. But so he acted it really, really well. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> uh, with um, Davy Crockett, were you um there's i think everyone knows davy crockett with the raccoon skin hat but yeah. this one didn't go that route right like, what was the conversations around all of that do you did you have them i just think it felt dated um and i don't know I think he ever wore a raccoon skin hat i mean there's like i i think that was maybe even created by disney by fess parker in like the 19 50s um so i don't know i don't even think he wore i mean like some davy crockett scholar is going to turn around and go he did wear it he did wear it okay 
<laughs> but from what I read, I don't think he ever wore it. I think it was created by Disney in the 1950s or 60s. So, um, yeah, that's just, we, you know, I think people would have laughed, to be completely honest with you. I think they would have laughed their heads off. Um, and they would have, there would have been SNL sketches for days. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm really glad I didn't have to do it. <laughs> No. Yeah, I, I I did wonder about Raccoon as a bandage. I was a bit like, um, that might not be the best. <laughs> it's, a homage. it's a homage to the uh, to the old. Movie. Um, but yeah, you know, um, I think it was cool to see Davy Crockett like skinning, like shooting a raccoon, skinning it, eating it. You know, like <clears throat> there's something cool about the character doing those sort of like basics. You know. Mm. Doing, like survival basics. Like I did go on a survival course actually um, before I did the movie. And so it's kind of cool to like see someone doing that stuff. You know, I, I think it was a nice part of the film. You know, it, it's not necessarily needed for the plot for that. It could have been brushed over in about 15 seconds as, uh, as much as like getting the horse and all that. But sometimes it's kind of nice to have those, have those little moments. Well, yeah, I think acquiring those skills and so when you're doing that scene, it looks authentic, right? Yeah. It doesn't, because that's, that's the thing sometimes when people do certain things and they're just like, wait, they were holding it with the wrong hand or you don't, <laughs> yeah. you don't do it like that. What were they doing? You know what I mean? So if you actually practice, yeah. learn how to do yeah. it, yeah. even though it's just going to be a few seconds on screen, yeah. that's really important. Yeah, and also like you know, there was a big thing with the um, the guy, the armorer who gave me the musket. He worked on the Patriot with Mel Gibson. It's actually funny, Mel. Um, and he was saying that um, in the Alamo movie, he's a really well-known armorer, you know. Like, and he was saying basically, and like he like he makes just to put it into perspective, like he makes muskets that sell for like. 80,000 pounds, you know, um, like he makes handmade muskets to sell for 80 grand. You'd never know if he met him. He's got like hair to years, he's about 65, you know, he darks like that, like he, my name Kenny, you know, oh, nice to meet you, William. Yeah. Okay. When you're holding a rifle, you know, he, he's, he's kind of like that, that guy. Mm -hmm. You never know. But he said to me, he's like, it's like Dennis Quaid in the Alamo movie. He was closing his eyes while he was shooting the rifle. I hope I'm never going to see you close your eyes when you shoot that rifle. I was like, okay, man, I won't. So I literally made sure both eyes were open like this, like almost naturally. <laughs> but to be fair to Dennis Quaid, I mean, when that musket goes off, it is, it is crazy. It's like, boom, it's like a mini firework in your face, you know, like, it is full on. So, like, even moments like that, I tried to get right. I tried mm. my best to, like, make sure it looked good, make sure it looked right, you know. So at least when people like him watch, they're like, that guy's eyes are closed. Like, he's shooting a damn rifle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Like, with, you know, the... I think when you see, like, gunplay in films, I yeah. think... Before you didn't really think about it, but then after what happened on the set of Rust, yeah, man, I, I think you look at these things completely differently. Yeah. So, what was that like, you know, for you, like going on this, knowing that you know accidents can happen with these things? Okay, so I can tell you right now, like, I'm going to give you three, um, three examples of like uh, weapons I've used in the last year. Okay, so within the Davy Crockett film, um, I was never concerned about it because it's, um, you know, it's gunpowder, there's nothing in it. It's just, they put a bit of foam in the top. Nothing is coming out. I know right, that. Right. When I shoot that, I'm safe, okay. Then I went to make the Bulgarian uh, film. And um, I was like, are we using blanks? And they were like, no, we're just going to use CO2 and then we're going to add the flash in afterwards. I was like, oh my God, amazing. <laughs> so whenever I got handed a gun, I was fine with it. You know, like, mm. absolutely fine. Like, you know, like, 
this is this I, I knew this was basically a BB gun, which is basically what it was, just a gas pad BB gun. Um, there was even a moment when we were like, should we use a blank? And we were saying, no, we don't need to. You know, like, why would we need to use something that you can just add in afterwards, a VFX, you know? Finally, on the last film I did in Thailand, um, I, sh I shot a blank in it. I shot a blank at somebody as I, like, I come around and I shoot this guy. And I swear to God, I looked at that thing 12 times before it went in. Like, I looked at it, it's like, it says, it says blank, it says replica, I checked the chamber, I checked the gun, I've done a weapon safety course with, like, a police trainer in, in America, like, I know how to use a gun, like, so I really made sure I checked it, um, and even then, you make sure that you don't shoot anywhere near the guy, you know, yeah. like, you shoot way off to the left, or way off to the right, you clear the entire area, um, and also you put earplugs in, and that's why I was grateful in the Bulgarian film, we didn't shoot with blanks because it's so loud, it blows your ears up. You know, at night you're, you're, you're going to bed, you're like, you hear this ringing in your ears, horrible, you know, like, so, but I, I did work with an actor recently um, who was not weapon safety conscious. Um, and they were, the stunt team were, were not happy about it. You know, he made one cardinal error. So uh, luckily everyone was fine, but yeah, you have to think about it, it's your job. It's very important. Safety first. Mm. Yeah. Never thought about earplugs. You Never have thought about like an earplug situation. In fact, in fact, on Davy Crockett, there was one mistake they did make. And like the and I and I the special effects guy, he's a very well known guy, but he didn't tell me how big the charge was going to be on the saddle as it blows up. You know, actually, because when the saddle gets shot, not to destroy the movie for watching it, when the saddle gets shot, it's actually an internal explosive. And um, yeah, and when I was holding it, I didn't know I would need earplugs. And basically no one said anything to me. And then it, I, we exploded and my ears were just ringing, you know, afterwards, like from that thing. Um, but yeah, always wearing earplugs. I always put them in because it's your hearing, isn't it? Mm. <laughs> oh man, wow. yeah. yeah. Boy, you learn something new every friggin' day. You have to, you have to wear them, and you have to like cut them in half because <laughs> they always <laughs> out here. <laughs> oh boy! Hey, what was it like? Um, f you know, playing with uh, Colin Meany. Yeah, Colm's Colm's an amazing actor. You know, like there's not many people who can who can talk about acting like he. I mean, he's he's worked on so many incredible films so mm -hmm. when you get around an actor like that you humble yourself down you're with a black belt you know <laughs> you're with a four down black belt and you shut your mouth and you listen and you take on what they say and you know like when you're in the scene with them you, you respect their space you respect everything that they want one day, hopefully, I'll be there. <laughs> you know, like I'm, I'm not a four down black belt acting yet. But uh, you know, when you're with the big dogs, you pay attention. So I was very lucky to work with him, and and you know, I'm I'm always grateful to work with people like Con um, and people like what was it, Liam Neeson, people like that. Yeah, I mean, it. You know, I think it's a great resource. I'd yeah. imagine, you know, and it can just help your evolution for you know getting those next roles and that next performance exactly exactly you know um people are very interesting like you can learn you can, like i said before about humility you can learn something from someone who you think is not that bright they could tell you something about chess if you're interested in chess they might tell you something about chess that you never thought about before mm. like i said we're cooking they might tell you something about cooking you never thought about. Before. They might tell you something about DIY, you know, how to fix a window, you know, how to fix a, how to sand a floor, how to, you know, um, how to do things. Like, if you are aware and humble and patient, people can give out a lot of wisdom that can help you. <laughs> yeah, no, very, That that's always true. You know, I always tell, like, um, you know, in the day job, like, with the team, like, always speak up, right? Because... Yeah. Even if you think it might not be the right answer, we can take, so we usually can take something from it. It will take us somewhere. 
So yeah. never be afraid to, you know, voice your opinions on things. Exactly. Like, you know, that's how we learn. How do you get better at something unless you, you know, like I was just watching Bill Gates is, uh, he's got like, I, I'm not sure I just watched one, one episode, but it's on, it's on Netflix, you know, about Bill Gates. And it's just like, the guy reads like eight books a week or something, you know, he's constantly learning from other people. You know, he's got, that's what you're doing when you're reading a book, you're humbling yourself down to learn what somebody else knows you know mm. so you know that's very cool that like basically the richest guy in the world is still trying to learn stuff you know so trying to learn stuff from other people well yeah i guess that's how you stay that rich right <laughs> <laughs> you know what i mean if you're if you're close all the textbooks he's reading yeah. all the textbooks. <laughs> 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 no he's not no he's not <laughs> that is funny that is funny <laughs> <laughs> ah hmrc won't catch you on this one <laughs> Sketch. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, Bill doesn't see this and thinks like William he's blown the cat out the house. Yeah, I'm like, gonna come after him. <laughs> I every single film studio in Hollywood, he's never working again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I'll get back to independent movies. Now, um, you know, Davy Crockett is out, yeah. right? Well, before we get on to that, right, yeah. right now it is out. Yeah. How have you found the reception being? Like, well, well, you know, after doing all of this work, you know, the horse yeah. wrangling, the, you know, the lassoing, just the, you know, the, 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 the gutting and just all of this stuff, the prep that you did, yeah. right? The way you immersed yourself into this. Yeah. What? You know, with the reception to the film, are you happy with, yeah. you know, what you've heard, what you've seen? Yeah, I read a really nice review. I mean, although he said, I think he said it was a passable drama, <laughs> but it was a top critic. It was um, the critic from Variety. So that's really great. You know, like, obviously, all the reviews haven't come in yet. It's just, just come out. So, you know, there are just a few reviews coming in. But, like, that was a really nice review. And he said, you know... He gave me a nice review. He said my performance is good. Like, that's very nice. You know, you, I'll be honest with you. You can't do the work for the reviews. No. If you, if you care what people think about you, if you care what people think about what it is, well, you're never going to be happy. And you must always be looking forward. You know, like, you always have to be like, okay, what's the next thing I'm doing? What's, what's up next? What, am I, what have I got going on? Okay, well, that's already passed. Okay, next thing now. Like, if people are going to give you a bad review, well, that's their opinion. Like, you know, they might be going through a divorce and just showed up and watched the movie and thought it was the most boring thing they've ever seen. You know, you just don't know what review, what mindset someone's in when they go see a film. Mm. And you can't concern yourself with what other people think. It is art. It is sub subjective. It is up for opinion. <clears throat> I go to the Tate Modern, look at a piece of art. Sometimes I don't like it. Sometimes I do. Some people, some other people love it. Some other people don't. Like, what can you do? You know. So you just have to go and um, you just have to enjoy the work yourself and enjoy the prep you've done and enjoy the process of what you've gone through. You know, like that is all you can really do. And if I do look at the reviews. I'm like, of course I don't do, but I I take it with a pinch of salt. You know, like. I'm more honestly like if my mum liked the movie, that's great. You know, <laughs> like she's quite <laughs> like great. And usually she she likes it. So, you know, if I show her the movie and she likes it, then great. You know, like I started this whole thing with my mum. Essentially, you know, when I was 10, I was like, I'm gonna be an actor. And she got on the train from you know Gloucestershire and you know and went to London with me. And I went in for a 10-minute audition, got kicked out and came home most of the time. But she kept <laughs> Up, you know, and, and it, eventually it worked. So 
it's cool for her to see me doing it and it's cool for her to be happy with my work and um and I don't really care what someone who I've never met really thinks like you can't live your life worrying about other people's opinions essentially I mean that is you know that's it right I think you nailed it with that because that's the thing like there's times when I've gone into a, a press screening and I've oh, been dying, right? I've just been so ill or, you know, it was a shitty day in the Sorry. office or, you know what I mean? So, and that can change your opinion on something, okay. right? Like you always try and go in with an open mind, right? You always try and go, look, I don't necessarily love horrors. But I'm gonna watch this and I'm gonna see what see what it is, you know. And you know, there's been horrors that have, I thought have been great, you know what I mean. So it's just like you try and do that, but sometimes just films aren't for you. Exactly, right? They're exactly. just not for you. So if I, you know, if something doesn't work for me, I'll always be, you know, I always try and give the reasons why. Exactly. Right, it's not just this sucks, right? There's a right. reason it I couldn't connect with it, but right. then I'll talk about the things that work well in it and right. who I think this will work for. Yeah. You know what I mean? And and, and that's the thing. Good way to put it. That's a very good way to put it. That's a very smart way to put it. To say I didn't connect with it because of this reason. What I didn't get from the story is this, you know, like I was saying about my acting class, the acting teacher used to do that. She'd never say that was the worst scene I've ever seen in my life. She'd go, Okay, I didn't get this. I didn't get that. I didn't get this. I didn't get that. I didn't connect with it basically for these reasons. That's what I didn't get. That's what I didn't connect with it for. That is a constructive criticism. That's not a destructive criticism. <laughs> mm. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, like even if you, it doesn't work for you, it's going to work for a load of people. Yeah. Exactly. It's going to work for a load of people. So yeah, I, I think when you, you, you know, the way you look at this, I think that is the best way to approach it and not pay any attention to some of the people that are just like, this is, this is this, or this is, you know what I mean? Because it's just, you know, it's a lot of times it's just people having a bad day exactly. and wanting to lash out. Exactly. Let them, you know, so I just like, you know, mm. I, I do it because I enjoy it. You know, that's the only reason I do acting is because I love it. I enjoy it. It's fun. You know, I'm lucky. I love it. And if somebody else enjoys it, then then great. If they don't, that's okay. There's a lot of other films out there. There's a lot of other TV shows out there. Go watch something else. Like, like live your life, you know? <laughs> yeah. I, I think you can tell you enjoy this just the way you're talking about it, right? It really does come across yeah. in that. You know what I mean? So I, I think that's very clear. And it, that's great that, yeah, you can just do this thing that you love doing, yeah. you know? But what could be next, right? We, you know, I, I think on IMVD it shows a couple of films in post, but yeah, what what's next for you? Well, this year I have this, um, this film, uh, the it's called Murder Company. That's the war, war film, the World War II film I shot in Bogia that was tough. That's coming out this year. Um, I shot a movie in Thailand um, called Home Sweet Home uh, Rebirth, which is basically based on a Thai video game that did really, really well. And they made a movie out of it, um, a movie based on the game, the story based on the game. So that's coming out. Um, and I hope, and they're already looking at planning a sequel for it. So okay. that was shoot this year. Um, and yeah, I don't know what else there is. Like there's, there's talk of a few different things, nothing that I, I can kind of talk about now, but I have, a, I have another film as well coming out, um, An Enemy Within, hopefully that comes out this year. That's not even listed on IMDb yet, but um, that's apparently ready uh, for, distribution and that should be coming out this this year so there should be three more films coming out um but yeah like just you know just see what comes like it's all good like i'm very i'm very happy you know life is great to be honest with you oh that's terrific man that's terrific yeah. like are there genres that you haven't done that you're like oh, i wouldn't mind playing in that world 
Yeah, I think I would like to expand on the Western uh, frontier. Like, I'd like to expand to like the plains, you know, the, like doing a, a movie set on the American plains. Mm. I should, like, I shot in a movie in New Mexico a few years ago uh, called Land of Dreams with this Iranian visual artist called Shrin Ashat. And it was a really wonderful, incredible experience. And like, that's the perfect place to shoot a film, like a Western film. So, um, out and around Albuquerque and, and New Mexico, it's just, it's a magical place. So, I'd like to sh I'd like to expand on that. I would, you know, I would like to do a costume drama period, costume drama. They're a classic over here in the UK. I've never. Mm. Done I think it would be quite fun. It would be quite interesting to uh, to play a character like that. Um, any time period in particular i think it'd be quite fun to do like i don't know really just like a buccaneer sort of thing you know i'd kind of like to do that you know like whatever that is like around napoleon's era um mm. battle of waterloo you know like trafalgar the battle of trafalgar and with lord nelson like i'd like to do something like that you know that would be quite fun um to play that i'd like to play a british soldier I played an American soldier in World War II. I played a British soldier in World War II. That'd be quite cool. Um, I'd like to do something like mind bending, like Christopher Nolan. Like I love his mind bending movies. Um, like yeah, you never know where it's going to go. You know, they're always, <laughs> they're always like so out there. You know, um, and I think they're cool. I think he makes interesting films. So something like that would be cool as well. Yeah. Hmm. No, I, I well, you know what I mean. I, I think uh, yeah. your, your performances speak for themselves. So you know what I mean. Like you put it out in the world, so I'm sure those things will come to you, my man. Exactly, exactly. Just go put it out there, and you know, like I always say to people, don't focus on tomorrow. Don't focus on yesterday. Focus on today. Whatever's happening today, let's focus on what we're doing now. You know, because that's what counts and enjoy today for what it is and enjoy today for what you're doing. You know, like you can always have these big dreams for tomorrow, but the reality is enjoy this day for what it is, you know, um, one step at a time. Boom. I think <laughs> that's great. I mean, that's great, man. Yo, this, man, I've really enjoyed this conversation. Well, thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate it so much man yeah i really appreciate it really appreciate your time thank you hey come back with when the next film's ready to talk about man I definitely would, do that would love to thank you so much thank you all right man take it easy and uh yeah well done for davy crockett thank you bro thank you so much for watching it thank you all right all right take care all right bye bye